Welcome back. She's the Minister of Climate Change Issues, Social Housing, State Services and Associate Minister of Tourism and Finance. How she's got time to even be here, I'm, I don't know. But welcome to the cafe, Paula Bennett. Great to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Really cool. It's really nice to have you here. Now, I reckon we should make it like a politic-free zone because half the people, the viewers, will be going, yay, Paula. The other half are going to be going, oh, Paula. <laughs> we just like, no. So you better throw away. Oh, OK, yeah. sweet. They're, you're trying to get all deep on everything. No, they can go by the by. I'm good with that, though, too. <laughs> I want to know, because you've got a really quite an interesting story about how you met your hubby and how you got married, because you've been married four years now? Uh, I have got the, the soppiest love story ever, Good. you know? We like those. <laughs> It is though, and it still is, which is quite nice. I think it is about four years that we've been married. Um, you don't even I know. I know, I know it's terrible. <laughs> neither, neither will he, neither will he. I'll try and say it that way. Oh, look, we met when I was literally a waitress at a truck stop in Taupo, and he was the truck driver. And I would have been 18 or 19 years Aww. old then. And so we um, fell in love back then. And then we broke up about two or three years later, three years later or something. And it was one of those where I knew I loved him dearly, but it was kind of like, Oh, is the timing right? You know, yeah. I'm young yeah. and, you know, yeah. and I had my daughter then though, um, so I had my daughter before I met Alan, and so uh, anyway, it was about five years ago and I was sitting with girlfriends, I've never married, and they all, a bunch of them went, so why haven't you ever married? And I said, well, to be really honest with you, I've never met anyone I loved as much as Alan. Oh. And so we decided we'd hunt him down. <laughs> <laughs> Did you Facebook stalk him? We just so, it was like, I really reckon it's one of those sort of sex in the city moments, because you know, out came cell phones and out came iPads and it was just like, let's find this man. And we found him in Melbourne and he was a single dad raising oh, his two children. I'm you said that. <laughs> we're single. Yeah. And I was single. Nice. And so I, um, I uh, like any good politician, I waited until after the election because I was really busy. You had a bit on, yeah, and then okay. I went over and I met him, and it was just absolutely instant. And we just went, let's not muck around again. And we got married five months later. Oh, I know. Wow. And was he during that time? Was he aware of your career path? Did um, you know enough, what was going on? Right. Enough, which was kind of cool. Yeah. So you know, yes, he knew, but he probably wasn't as close that he'd sort of seen the negative and all of that. So things. So he kind of. And what was neat was when we did get back together, he just went, "Well, you're exactly the same." as you were 25 years ago oh. and so we kind of laugh now and we just go well we've been together 25 years we just had a 20 year gap exactly. <laughs> the one that got away but, and you got him back and work yeah. it must be quite hard though for him when he sees when he, when he reads things about you not to sort of take it on board too much because I know that I'd be getting like that's my wife she's not like that at all you'd be getting yeah. all sort of you know quite um quite possessive of you or quite you know, well, I always say that politics is almost harder on the people that love you because mm. you hurt more for people you love, don't you? You know, you know that mama bear yeah, thing with your exactly kids, or the, you know, you do. You want to protect and love, and I'm loved. You know, I'm loved by my parents, I'm loved by my children, I'm loved by my husband, and so yeah, they do hurt for you, and uh, so it takes a certain resilience and keep on talking, um, and I think allowing myself to be vulnerable with them because you can't be strong all of the time. Yeah. And so they allow me to be vulnerable, but then um, they've got to be strong as well so that I can get on and do what I do. Yeah. Speaking of doing what you do, outside of politics, have you got any hobbies? You know, how, you know do you have any time? Um, well, um, Alan and I are mad keen on fishing. So I love the water. It's my, it's my peace place. It's, I think it's why I love New Zealand so much that, you know, with these beautiful islands surrounded by this magnificent sea. So we've got a wee boat, you know, like nothing flash and we're as happy and sitting in that and I occasionally do work on the cell phone with a fishing rod in there. <laughs> but it's so cool, you know, like you just, as I say, this country is so magnificent and you sit out there on the water and look back at it. Yeah. And I reckon that's when you see mm. the absolute spectacular beauty of our landscape yep. and what it is. And you do have to take that moment and just go, I am really lucky to be yeah. living in this place. Sometimes you think traffic, things are a nightmare, but then you just got to take a moment and go, wow, yeah. this is incredible. And I love the thrill the catch, I've got to be honest too. I'm really competitive. Are you good yeah. at it? Uh, way better. Can you take me out? Because yeah. I'm a useless oh, really? fisher. Person. I really want to, but oh. I'm absolutely I'm a good sailor, useless yeah. fisher person. Oh well, I've got every trick in the book and um and my husband and I had quite good unhealthy competition about it. You know, like <laughs> nothing unhealthy about that. Yeah, yeah. No, we well, don't let each other on the other side of the boat, don't tell each other the secrets <laughs> of our rigs or you know, and I put secret burly down my side of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it, it's quite good competition. So, yeah, we just... Um, so that's kind of it. I, I don't get enough time for right. it. I mean, I say all that, and I've probably been out three times this year or something. But, um, yeah, it is what we enjoy the most, I think. When you first started, everyone knew you as a self-proclaimed Westie. Do you think you've changed much? I don't feel like I have. Right. I still feel like I'm me and I still live in the West and I still love all of the things that that encompasses. I still call a spade a spade and as you say, some people like it and some people don't. Um, there's nothing more grounding than, you know, an hour at the Henderson Mall um, for people to tell you what they really think. <laughs> really, 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 it must be slow going around the supermarket. Paula, I've just got something I want to say. Yeah, but there's nothing like Westies because if someone does decide to have a bit of a go at you, you don't even have to answer them because then someone else will have a go at them for having a go at you. <laughs> I've got your back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. well, hey, Westies have got your back. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the studio, really, hasn't it? Taking mm. time out of your busy schedule. You need to make some more time for fishing. Yeah, okay, make so. sure that you do that. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great fun.